Okay, so we've got big trouble in the orchards. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today. It is extremely warm. <laughs> it is the end of May 2020. So what we're doing today, we actually are dealing with a problem that we weren't expecting here on the new property. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start here at one of our peach trees. This is our Florida Prince peach tree or one of the four. You can see it's doing fantastic by the way, growing really, really strong, so we're happy with that. Now, one of the things that we had talked about and shown you is we already knew that we had bunnies, so that we had cottontail rabbits. And our cage, I'll link the video here where we talked a little bit about how we design these cages in order to make sure that those bunnies can't get to the trunks. So we already knew that we had that, that we had to deal with, so we've been covering our caged trees. Now, if Lori slides in a little bit closer, you'll see this is a peach tree. So we don't see a whole lot of damage on these because the obviously peach leaves, from what I understand, are pretty toxic to, toxic to animals. But you can see they still attempt it. So we've got some leaves here on the ground that they started to grab and then decided, no, not a good idea. So either way, this does a good job of keeping the little cottontails at bay. And they can't get anywhere close to that trunk. Now you can see we also added some bird netting here just to make sure that they couldn't get up here a little bit higher. I think uh, hindsight being 2020, and I think I had some comments from you guys, uh, probably a better option to go with hardware cloth uh, around these trees as opposed to this particular type of fencing, but we never had an issue in the past. Now, cottontails are one thing. What we're finding is that we have something a little bit bigger. We're a little further back in the orchard and I'm actually next to one of our plum cherry hybrids. So now this tree was growing really, really well. In fact, it was probably, oh, about this tall, I would say, give or take. And we came out one morning and noticed that several of our trees had been cut basically in half. And it might be hard to pick up because it's, it's growing back really, really well. But we found out very quickly that we have jackrabbits in addition to our cottontail rabbits. Now, jackrabbits are a totally new thing for Lori and I. We have never had to deal with jackrabbit pressure. So we come out, we see these trees half eaten, and boy, let me tell you, to say we were upset and frustrated is an understatement. So we decided that we needed to quickly do something to protect these trees because we had damage on, I think it was at least half a dozen trees that first day, another half a dozen the next day, it was getting bad. So we came through and we added some chicken wire, uh, also added hardware cloth on a few of the trees, basically just to make sure that they could not get back into here because we made the mistake of thinking that the bird netting that you saw on that other tree a moment ago would help with the problem and it didn't. They bit right through that and then literally started eating the branches off the tree. In fact, we have our Katie apricot tree that was eaten twice because we made that mistake. And literally he was, she was going into this hole, putting her head down and was eating further down towards the trunk. Big problem there. So what we've done is we've obviously extended this and made sure that we, we don't have any jackrabbits having the ability to get in here. Obviously we need to come up with a long-term solution, but one of the other things that we're finding, and if Lori scans that way behind me, you'll see we have our burgundy plum there and you can see she's trying to grow out <laughs> of the cage. She's growing very, very strongly and she needs out. It's just too cramped in there for her. And we also have our mulberry trees that are having the same problem and also our figs. So we need to come up with something now that may not necessarily be a permanent solution until we can get these trees tall enough so that we're not dealing with all of this branching down here near the ground and near the jackrabbits. So we did actually come up with something where we can reuse some materials from our garden bed built. So let's go take a look at that. So here is our temporary solution for our mulberry trees that are trying to bust out of those temporary cages. That would be some four foot hardware cloth. So now I'm gonna go ahead and link the video here where we talked a little bit about our garden beds and using this hardware cloth in order to line the bottom of those beds so that we can keep gophers, ground squirrels from getting up into our raised beds. So we had a little bit left over and this is actually what we're gonna use in order to build well, a 
bigger temporary enclosure. That way these trees can bush out a little bit better and you'll see that when we go look at the mulberries. But I've got, I don't know, somewhere between six and seven feet or so of this that we can go ahead and connect and get a nice bigger ring around some of these trees. This is half inch hardware cloth. So really nothing can get through here as far as these particular pests. So we are not gonna have an issue with either the bunnies or with the jackrabbits. Probably a little taller than we need to. We could cut these down, but because I wanna make sure these trees can bush out a bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach them this way. So first thing we need to do is we need to basically go ahead and create uh, the ring that's gonna go around these trees. So I've got a couple things. One thing in particular, this would be uh, hog ring pliers and hog rings. We're gonna go ahead and in three spots, attach the hardware cloth together. That way we can form a ring. And then we're actually gonna use another piece from a prior project. We're actually gonna use some EMT pipe that we cut down. And I'll link the video here where we actually installed our grapevine trellising. So we're gonna repurpose those, they're about four feet. So about four foot tall, three quarter inch EM EMT to attach this into the ground and then some zip ties to go ahead and zip tie that together. So that's essentially what you're gonna see here in these next few steps. So here we are, we're actually out here in the mulberry area. This is one of our contorted mulberries and you can see um, she's having some issues being locked up here and in here nice and tight. We got a branch that's grown out, what, probably a good six inches or so from the other side of this bird netting, we're gonna have to cut that. But what I really wanted to show you is down here. So we already have the bunnies eating the leaves that are down here at the bottom. Now again, don't really mind that too much. However, you can see she just needs a lot more room. And of all of our mulberries, this one is the smallest. So definitely need to have more room. And you know what, in the end, I really don't want bunnies eating these. So what we have is we have our cage ready. Um, we have our EMT pipes that we cut when we were doing our garden beds. We're gonna use those as our stakes. You'll see us go ahead and install this one. One thing you'll notice is we'll move the wood chips out of the way on both sides so we can press them back up against the cage. And obviously we've got our temporary irrigation that we have run. So we're gonna have to figure out how to pull that back and where to place that. Quick and simple, very easy, that's done. You can see as soon as we've released this little guy from the cage, she just spread right out. So definitely what she's wanting to do. And you know, in the, right in the middle, we could see there were some yellowing leaves because it's not getting enough sunlight. So now it is. Now, of course, it's gonna get a chance to bush out really, really well and start growing up, which is exactly what we need these to do. We've got another contorted mulberry there. We're gonna go ahead and hit that one. And then of course, we've got four Shangri-La mulberries that all need to get out of those little cages. So you can see we've got these cages here around the trees. So a couple things, we talk a little bit about this when it comes to planting trees and mulberries. You know, you'll notice that we have the mulch right up against this trunk. That is not an issue because mulberry trees will root from the trunk. So no concerns there. Second thing is we talk about planting and as far as the immediate area around the newly planted tree. Now these trees have been in the ground for a couple of months now. When we put them in the ground, they were in five gallon pots. And we talk a little bit about the, really the lack of need for a whole lot to go into and amend as far as the soil going back into that hole. You guys saw us, I'll link the video for you here. We planted these very, very quickly. 
on purpose. Now that five gallon pot had roots just to the outside of that pot. Well as I was scraping away the wood chips here to get these cages in, which are about six to seven feet in diameter, there were already roots extending beyond where you see this cage. <laughs> so the roots from that newly planted, planted tree are already what, almost two feet away from the trunk in two to three months worth of growth. So obviously a mulberry grows very, very rapidly. The roots are very aggressive. It's great to see that, but it also tells me we're watering a little too close to the tree already. We need to come out here with our watering. So either way, you can see we have the mulberries done. What I wanna do, I wanna show you one more thing because we had already tested this out on another type of tree. We went ahead and did the exact same thing for our fig trees and they were very, very happy about it. Fig trees like to bush out real well and they definitely have plenty of space to go. And here in the middle of summer, they get really, really strong growth. They're really pushing on a whole lot of new growth and they're already starting to fill in these cages. So definitely gonna have to figure out something different. So one of the things I think I wanna get from you guys is some, some suggestions on how to deal with jackrabbits. I think we're headed towards basically allowing the trees to grow up about a two to three foot trunk and then protecting the trunk long-term. Short-term, obviously keeping the whole thing kind of caged in there until that trunk is tall enough that the branches will come up above some type of trunk protection. We've thought a little bit about actually doing fencing around the entire orchard, but Lori and I would really prefer not to do that. Now, of course, when it's all said and done, I am a hunter and I can tell you what, jackrabbits, I have no issues whatsoever with taking a jackrabbit. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see around the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Second thing is we talk about planting...